uppity bitch say what? Hey you guys, my name is Cherie and welcome to my beauty, fashion, and lifestyle channel. Last night, I was able to watch Coming to America 2 and I was really inspired by a particular scene and I kind of want to create makeup based on the colors of the garments. And I also want to talk about the film a little bit. So this is kind of like a makeup tutorial slash review video in a way. I don't want to like give away the whole movie, but I definitely want to talk about it and share my thoughts and opinions on Coming to America too. Before I watched Coming to America 2, I felt like it was necessary for me to watch the first one, Coming to America, and I haven't watched that movie in years. Why is this foundation giving me a hard time? Anyways, <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in years, so to watch it with somewhat fresh eyes and somewhat adult eyes, you pick up on different things. I also watched the first one over because I wanted to kind of remember the plot, remember the characters, and kind of know where we're at with the storyline. And I wanted to see where it went in the new film. So if you are someone who have not watched Coming to America, I would suggest watching that movie before you go in and watch the second one because it's kind of necessary to really understand some of the jokes in the second movie, some of the plot, some of the nostalgic moments. You should definitely watch the first one. Otherwise, a lot of the movie would go over your head and you wouldn't understand it. You'll just be like, okay. Just another comedy, <laughs> but there's way more to it. There was one scene where Gladys Knight had came out and performed. She sings the song, I'm leaving, leaving <laughs> on that midnight train to Georgia. Well, anyways, the dress she was wearing was really, really beautiful. It was like this blue, this ocean blue colored dress. It had a lot of detailing in it, a lot of silver detailing in it. And I also saw some pops of like a purple that I just kind of fell in love with. Like, ooh, like that blue and that purple together looks so good. So I kind of wanted to create an eye look using those colors. So we're going to see how this works out. So I guess the first thing we could talk about are the characters in Coming America 2. It was definitely a star-studded movie. Of course, you have your main characters, right? So Eddie Murphy, who is the prince. And in this movie, he is actually the king. But then there's Arsenio Hall, who is Eddie Murphy's servant. Of course, we have James Earl Jones, um, Cherie Headley, who play Eddie Murphy's wife, John Amos, and Louis Anderson, who is also in the first movie. But in part two, there were way more, okay? There was Morgan Freeman, Michael Blackston, Ro Temi. Tiana Taylor, Eddie Murphy's daughter, I don't know her name, but she also played his daughter in the movie, <laughs> which was really nice. I thought that was like a really good touch. Wesley Snipes was in the movie. He played the general and I thought his role was so funny. Like every time he entered a room, he had like this pimp stroll about him. <laughs> he <laughs> He was actually pretty funny in the film. Tracy Morgan, Kiki Lane, and of course there's the son. Um, his name is Jermaine Fowler. He plays, I guess I'm kind of giving it away, he plays Eddie Murphy's son in the movie. So if you have a favorite celebrity, I'm pretty sure you'll run into them in this film. It's one of those films, like, we're gonna create a second version of it and we're gonna put everybody up in that joint. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> okay, hopefully this is close enough and you can see what I'm doing. 
A few other characters that came back in part two were the guys from the barbershop. I actually wasn't expecting that because if you've seen the first one, you know that those guys were already older. They were already on the older side. So you would expect them to pretty much be dead 30 years later. <laughs> They were already 70 to 80 years old in the first movie, so the fact that they came back 30 years later would make them like 100. But you know what? It's a comedy, so you could do pretty much whatever you want with a comedy, and it's a movie. So it was cool to see them, and those barbershop characters were actually played by Arsenio Hall and Eddie Murphy, so it was really fun to see them <laughs> just being other characters because they're, they're kind of famous for that, especially Eddie Murphy. I like the first movie, Coming to America too. They definitely touched on more social issues like for example when Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall came back to America it was really interesting to see Queens 30 years later so they definitely touched on gentrification because if you've seen the first one when those when Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall got out of their cab they were in like the hood okay it, it just was it was a rough area but as they're returning 30 years later it was completely different it was a very nice posh type of neighborhood and what was interesting is um like product placement i guess you call it like there was a fashion nova in the background like i don't think there's a fashion nova storefront in queens so that just let me know that um, Fashion Nova either paid for that spot in the movie or maybe they gave money to be in the movie. I don't know. They tend to do that a lot in movies. Like they'll have like the, these random product placements because typically you can't just throw brands. You don't want to throw brands into your films unless they paid for that spot. So I saw Fashion Nova. I saw Puma. Spotify. I could have missed some so that was you know that was just interesting to see but anyways back to the social issues <laughs> they also touched on misogyny colorism gender reassignment surgeries yeah they touched on quite a few social topics that we are dealing with today so that was really nice to see we're gonna pray on this blue because right now, girl. As you guys know, James Earl Jones is Eddie Murphy's father in the movie. And in this movie, spoiler alert, he's gonna die. But before he dies, first of all, he lets Eddie Murphy know that he has a son. And the king also requests a funeral while he's still alive. Honestly, I think that is genius. That is absolutely genius. Like, why would I want to miss my funeral? Have it while I'm alive. And his funeral was a whole celebration. And get this, he died at his funeral. What better way to go out? I don't know. I thought that part was absolutely hilarious. And I know it was meant to be a joke, but me and my crazy mind, I'm like, yo, I low key want to be at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, once the king dies, now Eddie Murphy is the official king and he has to go look for his son in America because his son will be the rightful king if he was to pass away. Now the issue with this becomes Eddie Murphy did not realize that he had a son, right? So it was kind of like a fling. So this is where they go back to scenes from the first movie and what was really cool about those scenes where they were going back to the first movie is that they had to reshoot some of those scenes and obviously Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall they are a lot older so technology is that amazing right so they took 
some type of I don't know how to explain it but they were able to take their young faces and attach it to their old faces it wasn't makeup it was done by the computer and I'm always fascinated by the making of these types of movies so and they really did look like the characters from the first movie you could not tell that they had aged or anything so kudos for technology so anyways Eddie Murphy he was able to find his son you know what's funny I feel like the person who played Eddie Murphy's son, I don't know, his acting was not up to par for me. I just felt like they could have found someone else. And it's not like they didn't have the budget. Like, you have all these other stars in the movie. How come you couldn't cast a better son? Not that Jermaine Fowler did poorly in the movie. I just feel like... I don't know, I didn't really care for his acting skills, to be honest. It was very, um, first day of acting school type of acting. Yeah, and it works because it's a funny movie, but he does have scenes that are supposed to be a little bit more serious, but it comes off as a joke because his acting isn't good. So maybe that was the point, but mm, I didn't really care for his acting. Another nostalgic moment from the movie is from the first movie is of course McDowell's. <laughs> so the owner of McDowell's is played by John Amos. In the the new movie he was able to get McDowell's in Zamunda. So now he has his own restaurant in Africa. It's up and functioning and they start selling like um, Beyond Meat Burgers. And <laughs> that was really funny to see because nowadays it's all about plant-based this, plant-based that. So that was cool to see that he still had his restaurant, but he's trying to advance that restaurant with the world that he is living in. Everybody is health conscious. Everyone wants to find a new best plant-based item. So that was really cool. And it was a good addition to the movie. I feel like the blue is a little choppy. Like it's a little patchy and I don't want to play with it too much because then it'll just get worse. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. Oh my gosh, I feel like we should talk about Tiana Taylor's role in the movie. So if you watch the first movie, you know that Eddie Murphy was supposed to have an arranged marriage. I forgot her name, but um, yeah, I forgot her name. But remember, in the first one, we left her like barking like a dog on one leg. And I was just like, dang, how are they going to incorporate her in the movie? And it was like 30 years later, she is still barking like a dog and she's still hopping on one leg. So she came back and she is actually the general's brother. Well, anyways, Tiana Taylor is playing the general's daughter, and she is to be um, married to Eddie Murphy's new son. And let me just say this, Tiana Taylor, her role was very small, but she blew it away from the dancing to the singing. That girl is really talented. The dancing, like, I was like, ah, go ahead, Tiana. <laughs> She looked good. She did a great job. And she kind of played the same role as um, the woman who was hopping on one leg and barking like a dog in the first world. Like she was raised to be a wife, if that makes sense. Another character that did a really, really amazing job is uh, Mika. Well, her name is Mika in the movie and she played Eddie Murphy's oldest daughter. And she is supposed to be the queen of Zamunda in the event where her father was to pass. She is supposed to take on as the next heir. But the issue becomes women are not allowed to run Zamunda only men. So that was another issue that arised in the movie. 
if you watch it you'll see how that portion ends and honestly I could say this I am kind of giving a lot of the movie away however the movie was slightly predictable you know there were scenes where you kind of could guess what would happen next like the bathing scenes you know that in Zamunda Eddie Murphy had a bather he didn't have to brush his teeth on his own. He didn't have to wash his body on his own. He had people to do all that for him. So those same individuals were a part of this movie, but in more of a comedic way. So that was really, that was fun to watch as well. I'm trying to think of some of the other moments from the movie that stood out and, you know, parts that I really enjoyed. I, I know it was a movie, but sometimes details are really important for me. So one of the details that I feel like was missing was a DNA test. <laughs> I know that's like minuscule, but there needed to be a DNA test, okay? You guys are just telling us that he has a son. How do you know that's his son? How do you know that Jermaine Fowley was the king's son we don't know that to be sure we need a test and i feel like that's the part that i kind of was missing out on because when eddie murphy and arsenio hall got back to america they met like his mom and the family and i just feel like the mom kept saying things like you know i was a hoe back in my day it's possible that you could be the father but no one really knew for sure. So I definitely feel like there should have been a moment of DNA testing. You know who else had a funny role and I kind of chuckled? Uh, Michael Blackston. I think overall everyone's role was really funny. Oh, fun fact. Did you guys know that the movie was actually shot in Rick Ross's house? Like the house scenes? That's actually Rick Ross's mansion castle estate in atlanta georgia and rick ross was actually in the movie as well so <laughs> of course he would be in the movie he's like y'all gonna use my house i'm about to get me a role up in this film <laughs> and i'm not 100 percent sure if that was like the the decor in his house but if it was he is very over the top very um gaudy i guess because a lot of the decor was very richy rich very oh <laughs> oh my gosh another character that showed up was baba the elephant and baba is all grown up so it was really nice to see him in the movie <laughs> His role was so small in uh, the first one, but it was nice to see Baba grown up and he has his own life now. Go figure. He's a father. <laughs> Am I beating this face to the best of my ability? I definitely wanted to share some of my thoughts on how it was put together how the movie was executed and you guys can watch the movie on Amazon Prime it is an Amazon movie which is also very nice you don't have to leave your house you can kind of have a nice little movie night with your loved ones that's what I did we watched the first one and then we watched the second one put a little blush on Okay, so here is a close-up of the makeup look that I did. I'm really feeling this. I think it looks good. Too bad I'm not going anywhere. Overall, the movie was very enjoyable. I enjoyed it. I had some laughs. I had some nostalgic moments where I could just go back to that time of watching Coming to America for the first time, even though I was a lot younger and I probably didn't understand a lot of what was going on in the movie. It was still bringing me back, you know? <laughs> Even though now sometimes when I'm watching these old movies and old TV shows, it's like, wow, there's a lot of problematic things happening in these shows, but it was a different time, right? So 
certain issues were a little bit more acceptable at the time. So I'm really happy a lot of those issues aren't acceptable anymore. If you know, you know. <laughs> If you've watched the movie, let me know down in the comments section. Tell me which part was your favorite. If you liked it, if you did not like it, let me know down in the comments section. Thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys on Friday. Bye! Bye.